Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. In this video, I'm gonna go through some breath indicators to try and get an idea of what's going on beneath the surface, okay? Overall, the market is definitely not doing well. It's under pressure, a lot of leadership stocks have fallen off. Um, stocks that have been posted solid, steady gains month after month after month, like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, uh, they've all taken big hits lately. Um, Commodities have done well, but then you got to ask the question like is the market, you know, can the market do well overall if some of these big cap tech names fall off and oil does really well? Like is, is that a foundation or a recipe for the market to to do well? Um, you got to you got to wonder, OK, from a trading standpoint, we could move money around and we could trade and we could still make money at Lever Brothers. We've had a lot of good uh, trades in the commodities. Um, but the question is, can the market do well overall? So let's look at some breath indicators. Let's try and get an idea of what's going on and also make some notes on what we would look for if the market tries to bounce here. What, what, what do the indicators need to do in order to tell us that a bounce could actually morph into a full-blown uptrend as opposed to just a bounce within a newly forming downtrend? All right, let's go through some. <clears throat> All right, so here's the S&P 500 versus the advanced decline line at the NYSE, okay? So you can see here, S&P 500 trends up, advanced decline line trends up, then starting in the late summer, you had the market continue up here, but the advanced decline line flattened out, okay? And it flattened out, telling us that despite the market moving up, Advances and decliners were approximately equal for a couple of months, okay? So that was, there was like negative pressure building and eventually that weighed on the market and obviously we've gotten a pullback the last month, okay? But it's not all bad because even though we've pulled back, okay, in negative divergence form, we've pulled back, um, we haven't completely fallen apart here. The advances and decliners are still approximately equal going back a couple weeks, a couple months. Um, we actually have a, a higher low in place right here. So it's not that bad. Okay, this is a pretty stiff drop. We've had a lot of big losers. Uh, a lot of former leadership stocks have fallen off a bunch. And yet the AD line has actually just held up fairly well. So as a, you know, I don't want to be the eternal optimist, but if I'm just reading this as is, I would say the advanced decline line is holding up fairly well in the face of the market being weak, and that's a fairly good sign. Um, the flip side of that is there are a lot of oil stocks in the at the that trade at the NYSE. So, you know, should we weigh that? Because you can have a whole bunch of tech names dropping, and then just oil is doing well. And because the advanced decline line doesn't take into consideration market cap or volume or anything like that, it only considers is the stock up or down. Maybe maybe this advanced decline line isn't entirely accurate because there are too many uh, oil stocks there. It's certainly worth consideration, but for now, let's just make note of the fact that the market has fallen, but the AD line has simply remained flat, which isn't so bad. All right, next is gonna be the NASDAQ versus the NASDAQ AD line. You can see it's a different picture here, okay? NASDAQ trended up here, but the AD line moved down, okay? Then the NASDAQ moved up to a higher high and the AD line, which had dropped to you know, a multi-month low, came up, got rejected by its 50, and then came got rejected by its 50 again and then moved down. Okay, so big difference between the, the NYSE and the NASDAQ. There's definitely some worse participation at the NASDAQ. Within the NAS, decliners have outnumbered advancers overall since the beginning of July. Okay, the trend has been down. There's been a, bit, been a couple of pops, but the trend has been down. So there's definitely money that's coming out of the NAS, or I should say out of the NASDAQ stocks and going into the NYSE. If I were to look at these charts back to back, so here's the NASDAQ, not the NASDAQ, here's the NYSE AD line. You can see it's flat for the last couple of months. And then going back to the NASDAQ, you can see it's down and over for the last couple of months. Okay, so definitely there's a, a rotation of money out of NASDAQ stocks and into NYSE stocks, okay? And we know this because money has come out of tech and it's gone into some financials, it's gone into commodities like oil um, and, and, other, and other such. All right, now let's look at the volume lines. Okay, so this is the S&P 500 versus the NYSE AD volume line. 
Okay, so the 80 line lets all stocks speak equally. It doesn't matter if you're Apple and you're a $2 trillion company or a small oil stock and you're worth 500 million, you get equal share in the indicator. In the, the, up, the, the volume line allows the bigger, the bigger stocks, which trade more volume, to do more of the talking. Okay, so sometimes you get a little bit of a different picture here. So market moves up, 80 volume line moves up, market continues to move up, and then the NYSE AD volume line starts to move down. So negative pressure was building and eventually the market dropped here uh, and you can see that it dropped to a lower low here. But now in the very near term, and again, I don't wanna be accused of being you know, an eternal optimist, uh, but I'm just trying to read it as is, is that even though the market has dropped to a lower low over here, you got a higher low being put in place over here. Okay, we still have a downward sloping channel. Uh, declining volume is still overall outpacing advancing volume. Okay, but we in the very near term, we have a little bit of hope that maybe this is, maybe we're getting close to a bottom. Okay, it's at least possible. We have to, you know, if you're short, you have to consider the possibility that we might get a, a decent bounce here. Now, shifting over to the NASDAQ, this has been up relentlessly going up, as you can see, uh, for quite a while. It's not the same slope as over here, but it is still um, going up pretty steadily. So at the NASDAQ, advancing volume has steadily beaten declining volume going back to the beginning of the year, going back over a year. It's just, it's been steady, steady, steady. Um, so the market has that for it, going for it. Okay, so overall, it's kind of a mixed picture. Okay, with the advancers, AD line at the NYSE doing, holding up well, but at the NASDAQ, it's declining. The AD volume line at the uh, at the NYSE has been channeling down, but here at the NASDAQ on this chart, it's been moving up. So it's kind of a mixed picture. Definitely not, you know, not, not everything is on the same page here. All right, let's move on. So here we have the NASDAQ, okay? So this is the NASDAQ versus the NASDAQ 100 stocks above their 50-day moving average and NASDAQ stocks above their 50-day moving average, okay? So, you know, the market moves up here and you have less and less stocks, less and less NASDAQ 100 stocks above their 50-day moving average. Same thing with NASDAQ stocks, and eventually that internal negative pressure weighs in the market and the market comes down. Then we have market moves up, and the same thing. Little by little, over the course of a couple of months, less and less stocks are above the 50-day moving average, and that weighs on the market and eventually it comes down. Um, this over here was the pre COVID top. And what I find interesting is this num this right here, this print took place right there. So it's like the market actually was kind of sniffing out something that was going on because the number of stock, number of NAS 100 stocks just pl above their 50s just plunged. So then the virus broke out and then you have, you know, a similar situation here. The market just presses higher and higher and higher little by little over the course of a couple months, less and less stocks uh, are above this key moving average and eventually the market kind of comes down and then it moves sideways and you can continue on. So lately, come moving forward to right now, as you have SP, you have the NASDAQ moving up and the number of NASDAQ stocks above their 50 slowly decline and then decline a little bit faster. And we're at the NASDAQ, we're at the overall NASDAQ, it was, uh, it was under, it's been under 50% for most of the last couple months. So NASDAQ moves up, internal pressure building because less and less stocks are participating, less and less stocks are above this key moving average and the market falls. But this drop has been pretty big, okay? This drop is you know on par with like some of the bigger drops going back, um, going all the way back to the, to the post virus low. So certainly enough weakness to justify, you know, this is to, to say this is a complete washout, it's possible. So one thing I wanna just note here, a couple comments is like one, uh, the NASDAQ 100 is, you know, supposedly like the biggest and highest quality stocks at the NASDAQ, and yet you only have like 15% of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average. That's really low participation. Whereas at the NASDAQ, over here, it's still low. It's b below 50%, but at least it's at like 34%. So while, let me get rid of some of these annotations. So while the big cap tech stocks over here were holding the market up, the smaller cap tech stocks were not participating. But now, big cap tech stocks have completely fallen apart, but we have a higher low being put in place over here. So there's definitely a shift. There's a rotation of money out of big cap tech and into 
smaller cap tech. And I'm, and I'm using tech kind of loosely here because I realize that there are stocks like Costco that trade at the NASDAQ that are not tech stocks, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of tech there, a lot, a, lot, a lot more there than anywhere else. Okay, so this is something we want to note is that there's definitely a rotation of money out of the NASDAQ 100 and into the NASDAQ as you know, evidenced by you know, the low print here and the higher low there. All right, here's the S&P 500 versus the S&P stocks above their 20 and above their 50, okay? I'm not gonna talk too much here. Just wanna make a few notes. You know, in a healthy market, okay, markets, you know, trending up, trending up, trending up, you tend to get a lot of high prints with, you know, a dip down, okay? So you get like high prints, a dip down, high prints, a dip down, high prints, a dip down. And that's pretty normal, okay? The market rallies, pushes higher, 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 makes a new high like three out of five days, makes a new high five, six out of 10 days, and then it takes a break and dips down. And then it reasserts itself and it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. It's the same thing with the number of stocks above their 50-day moving average here, okay? You got a high value and then a dip within an uptrend, then a high value and a dip within an uptrend, then you know high value up here, dip within an uptrend. But you'll note, over the last couple of months, we really haven't had any high prints here. We definitely haven't any, had any high prints here. So as the market has pressed higher over here, we knew you know, the absence of prints over here, the absence of prints over here told us something was going on, okay? Something was, you know, there's just a lack of participation. So, and we knew that, okay? Nobody, I'm not telling you something that isn't out there. Um, so we got, the number of stocks above their 20s dropped to a really low level, moved up, got rejected by 50% and moved down. And the same thing with the stocks above their 50. Dropped, came up, got rejected by their 50 and moved down. So if I were to spin this and try and say like, well, is there, way, is there something good happening? We do have a lower low here and we do have right here, we have a higher low. So in the very near term, the number of stocks above their 20s is better off today than it was two weeks ago when the market was at an even higher level. So that's a slight sliver of hope in the very near term. But for me to believe that any type of rally is gonna have legs, we're gonna need, at first, we're gonna need this to get up, up above 50%, and then we're gonna need to get it you know, up into a higher range here. Um, and it's gonna have to maintain that. Same thing with the stocks above their 50. We're gonna have to first get above their 50%, then we're gonna have to get like above the 70% level and maintain that. Anything short of that, you know, a bounce here is likely to do something like that, okay? So that's what we're gonna look for going forward. All right, let's talk about highs and lows here. So we have, we have the NASDAQ up top, we have NASDAQ highs, uh, new highs in green, NASDAQ lows in red, and then the high low uh, down below. So when the market's moving down, I mostly focus on new lows, okay? Spikes and new lows tend to pinpoint, um, you know, bounces. So we got you know weakness here, new lows spike, and then the market recovers. Weakness here, lows spike, and then the market recovers. And this just continues on. E you know each time we get a, a dip within an uptrend, dip within an uptrend, dip within an uptrend, dip within an uptrend, we get a, you know a short-term temporary spike in new lows. Okay, it's normal. It's uh you know it's it's a good way to kind of pinpoint when the market is uh is ready to bounce as you get a spike in new lows. So the question is, so like right now, we got a spike in new lows and we have a lower low here. Everything seems to be set for this, for the possibility that this is just nothing more than just a dip within an uptrend. It's certainly possible. And uh, so the stage is actually set, okay? New lows have spiked, so we, it, the stage is set for a decent bounce here. Now for a bounce to last, we're gonna need new highs to expand here, okay? When the market is healthy, you get decent new high prints, and they could be a little erratic, but you get decent prints that persist, okay? So if we get, so step one is right here, step two is we need this to expand, okay? And we'll see what happens, okay? The market's doing well today, um, and if it continues, we're gonna see, we're gonna have to see, do, does new highs, do new highs expand? Okay, one other point of note is over here, this is the 52-week low, this is the 52-week high, and obviously the market is a heck of a lot closer to its high than its low. Yet, we have the, the high low is below zero, okay? So even though we're really close to the high and pretty far from the low, uh, the number of new lows is outnumbering new highs. So that's gonna have to reverse. All right, next chart, same thing. This is the S&P 500 versus the new highs, new lows, and the high low at the, at the NYSE. 
Um, similar concept, number one thing we wanna look for right now is a spike, which we have gotten. And then number two we wanna see is, do we get you know an uptick in new highs? And can can those new highs continue to print at a decent level? Even if they're erratic, they're allowed to, you're allowed to have dips and then recovery and a dip recovery and a dip recovery, that's normal. Um, but we're gonna need to have some higher prints here to suggest that you know individual stocks are making new highs. All right, let's move on. Okay, a couple more here. Um, this is the S&P 500 versus the 10-day moving average of the put call, okay? Highs from the put call correlate pretty well with new lows. So we got a high here, the market bottomed. High here, market bottomed, and same thing here. You know, same thing there, same thing there. You can line them all up, okay? When the, mar when the put call breaks out and starts trending up, the market moves down and when the put call finally rolls over that's usually a pretty good from from a timing standpoint that's usually a pretty good timing mechanism for not pinpointing but like at least getting pretty close to a, uh, a to a to a tradable bottom so the market is markets trying to bottom as i speak and the put call is rolling over so it's a start but there's no guarantee okay you can see over here last september Okay, it took a couple stabs before the market actually uh, officially <clears throat> bottom. And over here, you can see, like right here, it moved down for a day, um, but then it actually went up to a higher high before it dropped again. Okay, so right here, you know, first step is being put in place, but it's got to continue. Um, any type of market bounce that, you know, any bounce attempt here that sees the put call like hover around up here and move up maybe, is just not going to last okay so confirmation comes from the put call rolling over okay one more is uh the sp500 versus the average true range okay markets move up on low or declining volatility and they move down on high or increasing volatility okay and average true range is a measure of volatility it's not the only one but it is it is an it is a measure, okay? So we have, you know, the average true range topped out here and then trended down, market bottomed, trended up. So we got a top here and a bottom there, and you, they all line up like that, lines up with that, that, with that, this, with this, you know, each one of these highs, each time the average true range topped and moved down, the market, um, you know, the market bottomed and moved up, okay? So all of these, some of these are bigger than the others, but all of these are just dips within uptrends. So now we have a pretty big move up here, and in order for this right there to be a bottom, we need the average true range here to roll over, okay? So far it's not happening, okay? But that's what's gonna have to happen. That's what's gonna have to happen. If this, if the market moves up here, okay, I'm talking about up here in the, on the S&P chart, if the market tries to bounce here and continues, but the average true range continues up too, Mark is not going to go very far. Okay, we need the average true range to roll over to confirm. Okay, so market's not in great shape. Okay, the indexes are below key moving averages. They're below key levels or a lot of levels of resistance above. A lot of key stocks, a lot of big cap stocks have moved down and are below key, key levels. Um, commodities have done well. Is the market really going to do great with commodities leave, you know, leading and Microsoft and Facebook and Apple and Google falling? You know, not to mention Nvidia and a bunch of others. Probably not. Okay, probably not. So the market's kind of under pressure here. Trading the trading environment is not very good. There's not a lot of good trades to be had other than in oil, and there's been some good ones in coal. Um, so from a trading standpoint, it's you know you've had to be really good rotating money to the to the key group. So right now I'd say markets under pressure. It's not easy. Be careful. Let the market tell you what's going on. Right now it's trying to bounce. If the bounce lasts, you know I've kind of outlined a few indicator outlined a few indicators um, and what we need them to do in order to confirm the bounce. All right. Good luck. And as a quick reminder, um, you know come check us out at Lever Brothers. You can uh, there's a four or five minute video on the homepage where you can check us out and see exactly how we operate. We offer trading ideas, market analysis to the financial community. Also check out our masterclass. You can just click on the link here and there's a video that, uh, that describes it there. Um, that too, that goes into a lot greater detail on all these indicators plus a heck of a lot more uh, in the class and how I use them uh, to, to, to navigate the market and make money. All right, good luck and I will see you next time.